Hello, I'm Ron Clark. We're going to talk about step four today. But before I do that, let's do a little recap of what you've accomplished so far. You've been at this for at least six months. That's all. Six months. It's only half a year. <laughs> um, it seems like nothing in retrospect, but at the beginning it's like, oh my God, how am I ever going to do this? Well, you do it by doing it. It's just that simple. So now you have ingrained these habits that are going to be with you for the rest of your life. Even now, I have certain habits that are related to my hermetic training that I still carry out every day. You know, I don't wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning anymore to do specific meditation exercises, but it's still with me every day. There's a, a habitual rhythm to my day that is very fulfilling. Um, so, you, in the past three months, three or four months, you have cultivated your creative imagination. Now you can create multi-sensory uh, imaginations. No problem. It's very easy to do at this stage. And you've had your first experiences, genuine experiences with the elements. So now, at the end of step three, you know what the elements are, how they feel. You can begin to see the logic in the uh, correspondences that are attributed to the elements. And also, you're beginning to see the fallacy of those correspondences. How we cannot describe the elements with perfect accuracy using physical corollaries. Okay? They have more than just physical corollaries. Okay? That's what we started out with in our conceptualization of them. But now we understand that they're deeper. They're more than just physical effects. They're astral effects. I mean, they affect our character. Our character expresses it in elemental ways, expresses itself in elemental ways. So, first work with the elements. And with the vital energy, you know, we, we've become relative masters of the vital energy. We now can not only breathe it in and out, but we can accumulate it. We can create dynamic accumulations of the vital energy, which will only get deeper and, and stronger as time goes by. Um, you have, in effect, in six months, become a magician. You are now officially magicians. You are magicians of the vital energy. This is one thing that you have mastered to a degree in that you can accumulate and you are beginning to work with the projecting and using the vital energy to help others and to help yourself. So, you're a magician. A very early stage of your development as a magician, and it gets you know, even more amazing as time goes by, and you learn new techniques and new abilities. In step four, we really open ourselves to the elements and using, accumulating the elements, okay? The changes you have made to your character in six months are amazing. I mean, congratulations, really. Um, it's, this is really amazing <laughs> that anybody, to begin with, that anybody would seek to improve themselves in this direct, uh, hands-on way. You've gotten in, you've gotten dirty, you've gotten all muddy, a little bloody perhaps, 
but you've made changes in yourself. That's, that's magical. I mean, that's what a magician is about, is self-transformation. It's always self-transformation. All the work we do in the universe using our magical abilities are works on ourself because we are the world. We are connected, okay? And you've established your connection to the rest of the universe in a really substantial way. So, it only gets better, you know? It only gets better and easier. The next tasks may seem, you know, insurmountable, but, you know, look what you've done in six months. There's nothing you cannot do especially in initiation into hermetics. You can do everything in this book. You, I know that for a fact. <laughs> okay, so, step four. i do an overview of the exercises here. So, <clears throat> step four, I've allotted six to eight months. And that's very fluid. Take the time that you need in this step. This is one of those crucial steps. Um, the work with the elements is the special focus here in this step. Character transformation as well. You know, that, that goes on. Especially at this stage in your development. You have to really be focused still on your character transformation. It has to be something that you do all day, every day. Um, but in the exercises, the main focus is on the elements, the uh, accumulation of the elements in this step. Um, but there's also, you know, another main focus of step four. These are, were some of my favorite exercises uh, when I was going through the steps. Uh, the transference of awareness into other objects, other beings, etc. This is of major importance to uh, the magician's inner development. The elements are more, mm, more of an outer development uh, in, in your training. Uh, you're going to be using the elements. Um, but the transference awareness, this, this feeds the soul. It's something you learn so much from. Um, well, at least I did, and I recommend it to you. Okay, uh, uh, overview here, you have to continue all of your daily habits. You know, getting up in the morning, your little uh, prep ritual, and then your exercises, and the evening exercises, etc. And you have to continue the character transformation work. And you must, during this time, now that you've learned these uh, uh, techniques and abilities with the vital energy, you must continue to use the vital energy uh, based on those techniques and be creative with it and imaginative and go beyond those basic techniques. You can create your own techniques for using the vital energy. Okay, Never be afraid of experimenting and learning. Uh, teaching yourself, basically, um, new variations on the basic techniques. Okay, by now you must be able to um, achieve uh, bodily comfort no matter what position you're in, for how long you're in that position. Uh, you know, like this. If that's your choice at the moment, you've got to be able to find comfort in that position. This is uh, the asana from step two and step three, okay? You have to be comfortable for hours on end, any time. Um, and you must, must grow, enforce, 
and deepen, to use Barden's words, and make more and more dynamic use of your power to radiate the vital energy. This is something you will always do as a magician, is at times you will need to radiate the vital energy from yourself radiate the vital energy to fill a room, to fill a space, a moment in time-space. Um, so, grow that ability, you know? Make your radiation of vital energy more palpable as time goes by. And, you must be a magician. You must use the abilities you have learned, here especially with the vital energy, to help, to help other people, to help situations, to help the universe be. <laughs> um, you are now a participant in existence. That is what a magician is. A magician is someone who actively, creatively, participates in the universe, in creating the universe, okay? So, you are a magician, so be a magician in your daily life. Yeah. The character transformation is another aspect of being a magician. A magician is self-aware, you know, aware of who they are, how they are, why they are in the universe. So, be a magician. It's that easy. You now have that power. Okay, the exercises this time. So, the mental exercises begin... I need to differentiate between the um, <clears throat> transference of consciousness or awareness, which is described generally uh, labeled this section of initiation to hermetics. But I see that there are two things that happen here. Number one is the translocation of awareness. Awareness is moved from one spatial location to another and you feel what it is like to be in that spatial location. That is what we start out with, the translocation if you will, of awareness, then that develops into a true transference of awareness, which takes in more of uh, the, the object one transfers into. So instead of just the spatial location of an object, we then, through the transference of awareness, begin to experience what the object itself perceives, not what we perceive uh, from the perspective of the object, but what the object itself perceives. This is, uh, it makes a whole lot more sense when we're projecting our awareness into a living thing, especially the animate living things like the animals, insects, people, etc. Because it's easier for us to connect with the emotional and mental um, impressions of the object itself. Uh, you know, we can um, connect more readily with uh, the conscious awareness of a dog, for example, than we can the conscious awareness of uh, the sphere. <laughs> uh, both have an, a, a conscious awareness, but it is a little more difficult to understand and therefore connect with this sort of conscious awareness. Um, <clears throat> so, we start with the translocation of our awareness to the object we want to transfer awareness into, and then we proceed to a transference of awareness in the more subtle types of 
perception of the object itself versus just our perception from the position that that, that object is sitting in. Okay, so we start with the translocation of awareness into simple objects. We choose five different objects, put them in front of us. Um, we translocate our awareness into that object and see it from the universe from that perspective. Um, and we do that with a variety of objects and we open it up till we can do it with any object in front of us. These are factual, inanimate objects. They're not imaginary, inanimate objects, factual ones. Um, okay, then we um, w progress to the... Uh, well, first, what we do is we translocate our awareness into living things, the inanimate living uh, things like trees, shrubs, grasses, um, <clears throat> plants. You know, they're, they're living things, but they're not moving. We first translocate and then very quickly move on to transferring our awareness into the plants the inanimate living things. Uh, and by that I mean standard. I mean, this crystal is a living thing, and it is inanimate, inanimate. Um, but here we mean things like plants and animals, and, okay. Or no, not animals, things like plants, <laughs> basically. Um, so, then we go to... Um, living animals. And we first Im use imaginary living animals with our eyes closed in meditation, and we translocate our awareness into these animate, you know, moving um, beings, imaginary. So it, it, it's a different thing to uh, translocate the awareness and transfer the awareness into a, a, um, an inanimate object than it is an animate object. The movement of the object, the uh, obvious self-willing, um, present differences in this uh, translocation um, and transference. So, we go to animals, insects and animals. We transfer or translocate into imaginary, and then we go to uh, using factual animals that we have in front of us, and we transfer our awareness into them. And this is when we begin experiencing their emotional states, their mental states, um, how their body feels, not how we feel with our awareness superimposed into that physical location that they inhabit. <laughs> uh, it gets complicated. Um, but how the animal itself is experiencing its existence. Okay, then after animals, we move on to humans. Again, translocate with the imaginary humans and then, so what this does is give us, uh, uh, it makes the entry into the other easier if we don't have to, uh, if we've broken that barrier of what does it feel like to be in that body, in that place. You know, how does it feel different than me being in my body in that place, uh, in this place? <laughs> Oi, <clears throat> you'll get the idea, okay? The difference uh, between translocation and then transference. Transference is very personal and very immediate. It's not about, it's not about your, well, it's all about the object's percep own perceptions. 
getting in touch with those perceptions and understanding them, experiencing their perceptions of their existence as opposed to your ideas of what their experience should be, okay? Uh, and that process, I've allotted six months because uh, it is involved. And I say six to eight months, but, you know, however long it really takes you, um, as long as you gain the ability to transfer your awareness into another object or, th or, or being, um, any object or being you encounter. And you will just continue doing this, you know, beyond your work with step four. Uh, it is, again, forms part of the basis of a hermetic magician's practice, this transference of awareness, because it opens you to all sorts of really valuable perceptions about the world around you, an understanding of consciousness uh, beyond the human form of conscious awareness, okay? And that is very important in connecting you with the universe around you. This exercise connects you with everything. It's really lovely work, in my opinion. Okay, then the astral exercises are all about accumulating the elements. We start with the whole body accumulation of the elements through pore breathing, just like we did with the vital energy, except this time it's with the elements. In last lesson we learned how to breathe in the elements, just like we did with the vital energy, so we know what the elements are, and now we're going to accumulate them in exactly the same way we did with the vital energy through pore breathing. We start with the whole body and then we do the body parts again, just like we did with the vital energy. Now, Barden presents two techniques for um, inhaling the, uh, uh, the elements into the body parts. The first is we accumulate the vital energy in the whole body, I mean, excuse me, the element in our whole body, and then we internally direct the accumulated element into the organ or body part. So I want to fill my hand with the fire element, I accumulate the fire element to my whole body, and then direct the whole accumulation into my hand. And then to rid uh, you, yourself of the accumulation, you again spread it through the whole body, uh, diffuse it through the whole body, and then exhale it, or, you know, rid yourself of the element. Um, then the second method that he describes is to transfer awareness into the hand. So this is working through the transference of awareness, which internally in the body is very easy. So um, all my awareness goes into my hand and I inhale the fire element through my hand. Okay, I am in my hand, my awareness is in my hand, and I am inhaling through my hand all of the um, element, the fire element, and, you know, it stays there for a while, and then I exhale it from my hand itself. So there's other ways to do it as well, um, but these are the two techniques that Barden brings up in uh, step four. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> so, then the final astral exercise is accumulating the elements in their respective bodily regions. The head fire element, air element, water element, earth element, um, and we go through in sequence. Um, you inhale first the earth element into the leg region, you accumulate the earth element in the leg region, okay, you get a dynamic accumulation of the earth element in its region, then you, proceed, you hold on to it, 
proceed to the water element and you fill the water region with the accumulation of the water element and hold on to that. So now you have the earth element and water element. Then do the same for the air element. Hold on to that. And then the same for the fire element. And hold on to all four accumulations simultaneously. Ah, wow, this is very tonic, uh, very healing, very energizing and empowering. Um, another exercise you'll probably keep for life. Um, yeah, this is something that I still do frequently. It is very stabilizing, shall we say. And then you exhale the fire element, exhale the air element. It basically drain the body of the elements going back down to the earth element at the finish. So, um, <clears throat> now for the physical exercises, there's only one thing in, this, in the physical exercises, and this is the, the section on creating the personal right. Uh, here he talks about finger rituals and ascribing each of the fingers to an element plus the akasha and creating rituals that basically the, these are rituals in, that will rapidly uh, create a, an accumulation of either an element or the vital energy. Um, so it, it's Basically, it saves time in the end. So you do a, a finger ritual and automatically there is an accumulation of the element or the vital energy. And he suggests creating one to three uh, personal rituals. And what this means is that ideally you have one ritual for the vital energy, one ritual for the fire element, and one ritual for the water element. That is the basic minimum uh, that will serve you well um, for your future, future use. Um, so what you do in the beginning, the first one you want to create is a, a finger ritual or some form of ritual for the vital energy so that in the end of the, this process of creating the finger ritual, you will be able to through a movement or phrase or however you want to set it up, you will instantly have a, a massive accumulation of the vital energy at your fingertips. That is what it is. So work with the vital energy first because that's what you have mastered first. I mean, you can start working with that right now at the very beginning of the step four work. Um, no telling at this point how long it will take you to succeed in creating your ritual. I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> it's up to you and how diligent you are in your daily practice of it. And it takes very disciplined practice to uh, really create such a ritual. Um, but you will the dividends at the end are, are uh, yeah, do it. It's worth doing at any rate. Um, so then once you have your vital energy uh, finger ritual or whatever, uh, you will understand how it's done. Um, and when you do the next uh, ritual, it would be that much easier. To create and much quicker to create so move then next to the fire element ritual and then finally to the water element ritual whichever of those two elements is going to be the handiest for you in whatever you do okay um, and that ends the work of step four so this is the transference of awareness the accumulation of elements and the personal ritual. Okay. So, uh, let's move on to the, in this case, monthly 
schedule. I've divided this into six months. It should take you probably a minimum, I would say, of six months to accomplish step four. Uh, it, if it takes you longer, take the time. It's more important that you really succeed in these exercises than that you finish them on a specific time schedule, okay? So if it takes you eight months to do, to really master these exercises, so be it. There's nothing wrong in that, you know? There's absolutely nothing wrong in it taking you more than the time I've allotted. You know, this is just my suggestion of timing. That's all it is. It's not law, okay? You won't be a failure if it takes you longer than six months. What you will be is a diligent student of hermetics. Okay, so the monthly schedule. I'm not going to go through the, the habits, <clears throat> the morning habit, um, the preparatory habits, and the, uh, yeah, I mean, you, no point. You already know those. So, the first month in the morning and the evening, uh, we start with our usual thought control, the observation for a minute, just check in with the brain, a uh, uh, period of contemplation, um, and then uh, a period of vacancy of mind. Okay? Then we go into our hermetic exercises. The first is the translocation of awareness into simple factual objects. These are objects that you put in front of yourself and you look at. Now you do this with your eyes open. You want to see the object and imagine what it is like from that object's experience, uh, perspective. So you have five of them. You go from one to the next until you know it is easy to perceive the world from the perspective of that object sitting on the table or whatever in front of you. Okay, then once you've mastered, now you have a whole month here, once you've mastered those five objects, you move on to other objects you see around you. You don't have to bring them to the space in front of you. You can then project your awareness into that object, translocate your awareness. You're moving, physically moving your awareness so that it, inha it inhabits that place in time space, that other place. So you are seeing the world as if through your own eyes, you're using your eyes to see from the perspective of that object. Okay? Um, it's really very simple. Just let yourself do it. Uh, use your creative imagination. At first, you'll need to use your creative imagination, most likely. But that should transition very quickly to actually being in that object, looking around with your human eyes, perceiving things in your human way, okay? Then you move on to exercises with the accumulation of the elements in the whole body with poor breathing. You're going to start with fire, and then you're going to move on to air. So, beginning of the month, you start with fire. Soon as you get the, the, accumu the ability to accumulate the fire move on to working with the air element. So you work with one element at a time until you master it, then you drop that element and begin working with the next in your daily sessions, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and then you start working on your personal right. The first month it is mostly about uh, defining what that right is going to be, what you want to use this right to do. Is it for a massive accumulation 
of the vital energy instantaneous um, that you can direct wherever you want. If that's the case, then meditate on that. You know, perform the accumulation you desire to uh, create with your ritual and, you know, start binding your ritual to that process of the accumulation and then the fact of the accumulation and then its dispersal, you know, if that's appropriate. So, you know, you get to design your own little ritual. Be creative. Have fun with it, you know. Make it a cool little finger ritual. It doesn't have to correspond to anybody's ideas. It's all your own creation. So, begin working on that ritual, that first ritual, and start making process and progress with it. And carry on <laughs> through the whole month, you know, building on what you are beginning to create. So, month two is again thought control, single pointedness, vacancy of mind, and then we work with the. Uh, okay. We work with the transference of awareness into plants, shrubbery, and trees. You know, if you have a house plant, you know, start working with that off the bat. If you don't have a house plant, get a house plant or two or three, you know, so that you have something to work with. If not, you're going to have to go outside and put yourself in front of an actual plant or tree or shrub. So we are going for inanimate recognizable life forms. Okay? So, this is a bit different. This is translocation, but then it is more. It becomes more than translocation. You are trying to get in touch with a perception of that plant's existence. So, you have your plant in front of you. You translocate into that plant and you perceive from the perspective of that plant with your human eyes as a human would in that position. Then you expand your awareness to beyond just your human perceptions and you begin to feel what it is like to stand there as that plant. To begin to understand what it means to have uh, the sunlight moving throughout the day and tracking it. To begin to feel what it feels like to be that plant sitting there in that pot on, you know, to be disconnected from the earth in that way, but still have your roots in some earth. You know, that, that odd feeling of displacement that a potted plant experiences. So you get to understand, if you're outside, you get to feel what it's like to put your roots down into the earth, to feel that connection and feel that connection to the air above, you know, to be reaching for sunlight. So you really, you really at this point, you, you use your creative imagination at the beginning of that transference of awareness, but very quickly that it just dissolves and you get to experience the plant itself as the plant, you know? What does it mean to experience existence as a plant or shrub or tree? Oh, the trees are amazing. That's going to be an amazing experience. You know, people talk about hugging a tree. Well, this takes it beyond that. You're not just 
hugging the tree. You are, in essence, but you're hugging the tree from the inside. It opens a whole nether realm of communicating with plants and trees. This is a really beautiful experience. Now I've again allotted, uh, yeah, just one month for that, but you know, once you've introduced yourself to plants, I'm sure you're going to find opportunities to do this. You'll want to do this in the future, you know, beyond your exercise period, okay? But during the exercises, you want to learn this ability to transfer your awareness, to transfer your awareness into other living beings, other plants. Okay, month three. Oh, yeah. Month three, we'll do the usual, and then we're going to be, oh, excuse me. Month two, the accumulation, yeah, I forgot about the rest of the exercises for month two. We're going to be accumulating, again, the elements in our th the whole body through pore breathing. We're going to work with the water first part of the month and the earth the second part of the month. So, at the end of these two months of working with step four, we will have learned to accumulate all four of the elements. Okay? And that's whole body through pore breathing, simple accumulation. You start with seven inhalations and work your way up to 30. You know, accumulate with the inhale, hold on to it, just vacant exhale. Accumulate with the next inhale, vac vacant exhale, until you get to your maximum. Increase it by one every day. So you work your way up to 30, accumul 30 inhalations for, for an accumulation, and then you stop. And uh, Ridding yourself of the accumulation is the same way with the exhales, so that you exhale either by individual breaths or all at once. That is up to you. You can work with both, experiment with both. <clears throat> In, yes, just keep experimenting with your release of an accumulation. It doesn't have to be breath by breath, you know, equal number of breaths. You can, you know, exhale your, your accumulation in a single breath if you want. So, <clears throat> this month it's with the water and the earth. And then again, you're working with your personal right. Perfecting it, you know, increasing the uh, the habitual nature of it. So month three, the usual introduction, and then the transference of aw awareness. <clears throat> We're going to start working at first with the translocation of awareness into animate beings, animals. Well, animals basically. We're going to work with animals at first, uh, animals and insects. You're going to use the imagination. It's going to be with the eyes closed in your sessions for one month until you can translocate in your imagination into any animate being. Um, well, any animate animal and insect. We're not doing human beings yet. This is a, another um, session. Um, so, in your imagination, into any moving being, or any animal insect, um, <clears throat> the idea here is to get used to what it feels like to translocate into something that has a recognizable will of its own and is moving about. That takes a little more skill than the translocation of awareness into a still object, an inanimate object. So that's what this month is about, is getting used to that difference. Now as soon as you get used to that difference, 
you can move on to factual, um, non-imaginary animals and insects. But that's really saved for the next month. But you can start earlier if you're ready for it. Um, and then we will begin um, <clears throat> the uh, accumulation of the elements in the individual body parts using the first method that Barden described. Accumulate the element in the whole body, just like before, but now you can dense it and direct it into the organ or body part you're working with. So again, condense it, draw it into my hand. So that the accumulation now is, is absent from the rest of the body where it was accumulated into and focused just in that particular body part. Fairly simple. And then to get rid of the element, you draw it back into the whole body, basically expand it into the whole body and, you know, eliminate it from the whole body. We'll do that for a month. And again, work on your personal right every day. Working on the personal right. Keep developing it. You know, by now, you probably have, you know, mastered your uh, right with the vital energy and can at any moment create a large accumulation of the vital energy wherever you want and use it in whatever you way you want to. And, you know, uh, uh, disperse it in any way that you want to. Okay, month four. The usual morning, uh, you know, daily uh, introduction, the thought control, single pointedness, vacancy of mind. And then we're going to transfer the, the rest of this month, this whole month, will be dedicated to transferring awareness into um, animated uh, living animals, insects, birds, etc. Anything but humans, okay? Um, and we will just, these have to be factual. Um, someone, you know, you have to be in front of the uh, animal, insect, or bird, and a fish, you know, reptile, whatever. Um, you have to be looking at it. This is done with the eyes open, looking directly at the animal, bird, whatever, um, and transfer your awareness into them and make a connection with their internal existence. So you begin to experience existence as that bird experiences existence. As it flies, you get to understand what it means to fly, okay? Or to slither in the grass if you've chosen a snake. Um, to experience what the animal itself experiences of existence. That is the goal in this, uh, these exercises. This expansion of your consciousness to encompass other, you know, to really experience what these other creatures experience, okay? So, that is, uh, okay, that is the step, I mean, the f fourth month, <laughs> I'm losing myself here, fourth month, okay. Now we're going to do the accumulation of the elements in the various parts of the body um, by the second method that Arden describes. And that is transferring the awareness into the body part. So transfer my awareness into my hand, 
Breathe in, inhale the earth, the fire element. So I have an accumulation of the fire element in my right hand, and then to uh, to disperse the fire element, I exhale it from my hand, and then my consciousness goes back to the whole body. Okay, so it's a focusing of awareness, an inhalation through the body part, an accumulation through the body part itself, and dispersing it through the body part itself, and then a reintegration uh, of the awareness. Okay, we'll do that for the full month. Uh, <clears throat> And, of course, working with the personal right. Perhaps moving on to the fire element of personal right. Okay. Month five. Now here, <clears throat> we're going to start working in the transference of awareness with imaginary. We're going to actually translocate into the imaginary human beings. With the eyes closed, we imagine human beings. They may be people we know, but this is just imaginary getting comfortable with translocating our awareness into the human form, into the moving, breathing human form. This will probably be pretty quick, since you already did master that in the other animals, it's very little difference doing that with a human being if you truly gotten to the level of transferring awareness into an animal, okay? Then we move on to the transferring of awareness into a human being that we picture, I mean, that we see before us, a factual human being with the eyes open, you know, okay, that's... For the next month specifically, but you can be started in this month whenever you've mastered the translocation into an imaginary human being. Uh, then we accumulate the elements into the bodily regions that I described before. We start with the earth in the leg region, accumulate it, hold on to it. Then in the water region, accumulated, hold on to it. Air region, accumulated, hold on to it. Fire region, accumulated, and hold on to all four at the same time. This takes a little getting used to, keeping these four... We have to maintain four separate focal points in our awareness simultaneously that takes a little adjusting to, so that we keep our awareness of the earth element region while we are accumulating the water element region. Then we keep an awareness of the water and earth region while we accumulate the air region. And then we keep an awareness of the air, water, and earth regions while we accumulate the fire region. And then we merge the awareness of all four regions simultaneously and hold that for as long as is comfortable, as long as we have time or the desire to do so. Okay, the longer that quadrupolar awareness is held, the better. Basically, it's very healing, very balancing. This has a great influence on the character transformation work and achieving that astral equilibrium of the elements. Okay? This is the equilibrium here. And reinforcing that equilibrium through this exercise. And then we release, we break our awareness back into these four parts and release the fire element and that awareness. Release the air element and that awareness. Release the water element and that awareness. 
and release the earth element and that awareness, return our awareness to an integrated uh, normal awareness, okay? And of course, we're working again on our personal right after that, okay? And the, that specific exercise with the regions of the element will impact all the future exercises you do. Um, they become easier. Your awareness becomes more integrated through time. Okay. Now, the sixth and final month, perhaps it's your final month on step four. If it isn't, just this will be the, the next step in your progression here. Uh, the transference of awareness is solely about the factual aware uh, transference of awareness into other human beings. Now, this, this is really a major step in a magician's um, development. This ability to transfer your awareness into another human being and begin to perceive what they are experiencing of their existence, not only from their location in time and space, which is pretty significant itself, but their internal uh, feelings, their internal thoughts eventually. You know, it, it sort of goes in layers of what you can perceive of another person. You'll start out with just the, you know, basic translocation, and it will deepen to where you are actually experiencing what it feels like to be in their body, what they experience of their body, to uh, deeper levels of their emotional states. You know, not only their present emotional states, but past emotional states. You begin to see into their character, why their character is as it is. And then, you know, you can begin eventually to perceive their thoughts, why they're thinking what they're thinking, what it is they're thinking, how are they thinking those thoughts, etc. You connect with other human beings on a very intimate level. So, you know, uh, some respect, you know, some honoring of other people's own limitations and other people's desire to hold certain secrets, you know, to reveal only parts of themselves. You have to learn to respect their limitations, okay? And... You know, you really don't end up doing that deeply intimate a perception of another person very often. Um, at least I don't, just out of sheer respect. You know, if someone invites me to see them deeply for who they are, then I'll, I'll go there. But if someone has all these barriers up, I'm might take a, a, a little glance, glance to really see what those barriers are. But that's as far as I go. I respect their personal boundaries, at any rate. Um, so, be careful. Be respectful. Don't barge in on someone's, you know, intimate places without invitation, without permission. Okay? Uh, then we're again continuing the um, accumulation of the elements of the four regions. And that's where we'll end the step four work, is accumulating, you know, creating this elemental equilibrium in our own uh, mental, astral, and physical bodies. Because that is what you are doing. You are creating an equilibrium in your physical body, so this is going to have some balancing 
you know, effect on your physical existence, and you're doing this astrally, you are creating the elemental equilibrium of your astral body, and you are beginning to affect your mental equilibrium as well. It really finalizes in a future step, but this is where you start. This is where it begins, right here in this exercise. Okay, and then you will <laughs> again be working on your personal rhyme. And you don't have to stop at three. You know, you can have dozens if you want. It takes a lot, a lot, a lot of work, you know, and it ultimately becomes quicker to just, <laughs> you know, oh, there's the vital energy, it's all I need right here, right now. Um, and that is something you should be working with in this step, is experimenting, you know, with the release of the vital energy. You know, it can be instantaneous. Just as accumulating the vital energy, you know, you're accumulating the vital energy from the universe through your body. You don't need to do it through your body. You can do it directly from the universe. In fact, that's where you want to be in the end. You don't want to bring um, the vital energy or the elements necessarily through your own body. You don't need to. It can be instantaneous from the universe directly. It also doesn't have to have anything to do with your breath. You've been using your breath because that's a, a good way to train and to especially make it uh, a visceral experience and bring it in with the breath. But it doesn't have to be tied to the breathing at all. It doesn't have to be tied to the breathing when you accumulate it in your own body. You know, you can just instantaneously have an accumulation of the vital energy in your whole body or a bodily organ without using the breath. And again, you can just do it from the universe, directly into yourself or into anything external to you. So, experiment. Have fun being a magician, you know. Be creative and uh, carry on. So, good luck. <laughs> good luck. It's an exciting adventure. I hope I convey in these videos, how exciting it is, you know, how exciting I feel that it has been for me. I, I hope to convey that to you so that you become excited about the work as well. So carry on, young magicians. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.